So we're going to start by reviewing the area of a rectangle and a parallelogram. rectangle. Um, I know that you've probably learned to find the area of a rectangle by multiplying the length times the width. I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to change the vocabulary a little bit on you. Okay. I'm going to call this down here the base, the length of the base, and I'm going to call this the height, h. Okay. So I'm just changing it slightly, but to find the area of that rectangle, it's just going to be the base times the height, right? Y'all remember that from your previous classes? Okay. So the area of that rectangle is base times height, like that. Now let's take a look at the parallelogram. I'm going to add something here. I'm going to add the height here. Okay, so here for the parallelogram, you have the length of the base down here, and you have the height. Have, in, in one of your other classes, have you seen how this converts to a rectangle? Yeah, where you basically chop this triangle off, and then you put it over here, and voila, it is a rectangle, right? So if you had scissors and you cut this part off, you could relocate it over here, and then it would be a perfect rectangle. So the area of a parallelogram is the same as a rectangle. It is the base times the height. You're probably thinking, Miss Mac, what does this have to do with circles? You will find out. Okay. Now, um, at this point, we're going to start working with our circle that I passed out. Now, the problem is, is I made this way too big, and this will not fit on your page. So I passed out compasses. There's not enough for everybody, so you guys are going to have to share. But what I need you to do is I need you to make your circle smaller. The way that you're going to do that is you're going to put the compass middle right in the middle of your circle, and then pick a spot for your pencil and then spin it around like this. This is one type of compass. There's a lot of other different types of compasses too, but this one is the, the safest and easiest to use. Um, no, just make it smaller than it was. Okay. Once you have your smaller circle, you can cut out your smaller circle. I don't know what to follow. Oh my gosh, you drew a perfect circle. <laughs> 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 so, no, wait, no, wait, wait, wait. I need to use mine. Wait, no, use mine. Ignore all the lines in the minute in the middle for right now. We're just gonna cut out our smaller circle. Yeah, 
You should have a small, hopefully a smaller circle than the one that I passed out to you so that way it will actually fit on your page. And um, this, is, this is a hard shape to find the area of because the lines are curved, it's just not super intuitive. So I'm gonna start, we're gonna start investigating how they came up with an equation to find the area of a circle. The way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna start by cutting our circle into fourths. So I'm going to do the dashed lines here. Okay, now that you have your four slices basically, we're going to arrange them like this. Does that look any easier to find the area of? Yes. No. Not really, right? Okay. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to cut now each of these pieces in half so that we're going to have eight. What? So now we're going to cut each of these pieces in half. Are we going to cut it again? We will, one thing at a time, though. We're going to start by cutting each of our fourths 
in half. Some of you guys are very slow cutters. I can't even draw a circle. Yeah, he's still, he's, he's just not putting out his Oh my goodness. All right, once you have your, um, your pieces cut in half, let's arrange them like we did last time. look like? A parallelogram. And guess what? We know how to find the error of a parallelogram, right? Okay, so let's do that one last step now. Let's cut each of these pieces in half again. Once you get it all laid out, you can actually glue it on this time. mine too so that you guys can see my 
you have glue sticks. If I start passing out tape, we're going to be here all day. Okay guys, take a break from gluing for just a minute and look up here because I want to make sure we can uh, at least make it possible for you to do your homework tonight. Okay, we have already established that look, this looks a lot like a parallelogram now, right? Yeah. Okay, what is the height of our parallelogram? The radius, I heard it. Okay, the distance from the center of a circle to the edge is called the radius. And this, that's what this length right here is, okay? So this distance right here is the radius. Now, can anyone tell me what the base 
of our parallelogram is Robbie. Close. Okay. I mean, the circumference. Wait, yeah, the um, circumference. No. You're on the right track, Irvin. You're really close. Anyone else want think they want to take a stab at it? I just feel okay. free to just like sh go. Yeah, Olivia. Okay. Olive. What is it? The base. And what is the base in, in this situation? Uh, the height is the radius. Okay. Um, Irvin was close. He said the circumference. Macy. Somebody else said that. That's getting warm. Um, Hudson. Is it what? The circumference. Kylie. Okay. Well, let's. Let me just give you a little hint. Half of the outside edges are along the bottom. Half are along the top. Oh. You got it, Irvin. What is it? It's okay. What's it called? It's like the. Uh, it's like a semicircle thing in a chicken. Yeah. So you were on the right track. You said circumference, but how much of the circumference is the base? It's half of a circumference. So that's. Okay. All right. So um, Irvin brought us home. Thank you, Irvin. Okay. So um, we're saying that the base is half of the circumference. Well. What is our equation for circumference? Go ahead. Oh, diameter times pi. What about the one that involves the radius? Great. Okay, so we know that the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. Now, um, if you multiply a half times two, you just get one. So that means the base is pi r. And we know that for a parallelogram, you multiply the base times the height. So we're going to multiply pi r times r. Because there's uh, this r times that r is r squared. Okay. So how many of you see, have seen this equation before? Question mark. But I'm sure none of you knew how we got that, right? <laughs> yes. Okay. So on your homework tonight, you're gonna be um, find you're gonna find the radius of the circle. So they'll either give you the diameter or the radius. If they give you the diameter, what do you have to do to it? Oh, you guys are awesome. So you divide that diameter by two, you get your radius, right? And then that is what you plug in here. So it's going to be pi times radius squared. Now, in the answer checker, you need to make sure you use 3.14 for pi. Okay? And if you have questions, email me tonight. Thank you.